didn't realize that as recently as like 2015, there yeah. was a real low in your life. Yeah, I think in 2015, um, everything could flop for me. The charities I was running, the relationship up, the marriage I was in, it just went to pot. And my mission was basically to drive up the motorway and find a bridge and just crash into it. That was it. Um, my naivety didn't tell me that every bridge has a barrier around it. Um, <laughs> so basically, I wasn't successful. Ended up in Wolverhampton, sat in a car park for about a week, um, then came out, um, smelt really, really badly, so I decided to go and have a wash. Um, when I came back to the hotel, there was five people waiting for me. There was two police officers and, like, three kind of, like, psychiatric nurses, and they done a questionnaire for me and what have you. Um, and it was only when they said to me, we don't have to section him. And then I was looking and thinking, well, who are you sectioning? Um, because I've worked in that industry before. And then they said, well, we don't have to section you. We believe that he was going to be a harm to yourself and others and so on and so forth. So they left me alone and then... Um... <laughs> they left me alone and then a young gentleman, and he's here. I don't know where he is in the audience, and I'm glad I don't know where he is in the audience. Um, but there's a gentleman who came and said to me that he's going to take me under his wing. Um, and it's the first time that I ever cried in front of another man. I mean, I cried as if I hadn't cried for 45 years. Yeah. And it was just, like, non-stop. And, and, and the thing that he said to me, which was just, like, it was mind-boggling, and I still remember it to this day. I remember him saying to me, like, oh, I've got a job for you. And I thought, this is the weirdest job interview I've ever had. I stink from high heaven, haven't washed in a week, and I'm crying my eyes out. And then he just took me to his offices to talk about a community project that he had. But he did say something to me. He said, I'm going to look after you until you're back on your feet. And still to this day, I still live... Um... <laughs> There. So basically, you, you stayed with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I stayed with him for. Uh, well, I stayed with him for two weeks, and um, then he put me to live with his mum and his stepdad, and um, they've looked after me like you wouldn't believe. And he said he would look after me until I'm back on my feet. I've done a few things. I've been quite successful. Yeah. And he still has me in his fold. Um, <laughs> it's, um... Well, it... What a beautiful, generous, amazing thing to have done. Yeah. What, what's, your, what's your name, sir? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jez Bailey. Round of applause for Jez Bailey. Uh, gorgeous. should be so lucky. I mean... Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, yeah. No, I, I'm really, really lucky. There's people that I've met that I'm just, um, I'm over the moon with, and it, having someone like Gerald in my corner has just been phenomenal. I think the, the, the comfort that they've given me and the kind of secure blanket of a family and a community up there in Wolverhampton has just allowed me to just fly, because you have to think. I think 2015, I was looking for that bridge. 2015, 15 to 16, I went through therapy, then I started filming. I think 2017, the repair shop come, and then it's just like, whoa, it's, it, it's phenomenal. I, I mean, yeah. it's crazy. It's such a happy, happy ending, the repair shop.